Hello, welcome to another lesson with me. Uh, today we talk about logic part three, and our focus today is on equivalence, right? Equivalence. What is equivalence? Well, basically this is about the sentence if and only if. So this statement is about identity. That is, something is identical to another thing. So I, one item is identical to another item. Or one object is identical to another object. Uh, a lot of times in math, in your textbook, you find this as a definition. And instead of using equal sign, you will see a statement using three lines. In that case, you have an identity. For example, uh, you could have uh, something like this. Okay? An example of identity could be something like this. Cosine square x plus sine square x with a three line and equal to one. So here is an identity. If you don't really know what this is at the moment, it's okay. It's just an example from trigonometry. You learn about this in trigonometry chapter later. So this is three lines. Equal sign is two lines, here is three lines, identity. And in terms of logic, we think of it as P implies Q, a proposition P implies Q, and, this is very important, and Q implies P. So this has to go both ways. P implies Q and Q implies P. So you can think of it as a street with, uh, uh, with the traffic going in both ways. You can go there and come back. So going this and going back. It's not a one-way street. Implication is a one-way street. P to Q, and you kind of go backwards, all right? P implies Q, Q implies P. And uh, we say that P is the necessary and, here's the and, sufficient condition for Q, because it's going both ways. Necessary and sufficient condition for Q. Example of an identity is this. P, 7P say X is a negative number. Q say X is less than zero. Obviously you can see that you know, if P is a negative number, then it must, Q must be less than zero. So if P is a negative number, then the number must be less than zero. So this is a true statement. At the same time, if you know that Q is less than zero, well, then P, uh, then X must be a negative number, so P must be true as well. In fact, these two actually are identical, right? One defines the other, so P implies Q is true, Q implies true. And in terms of a Venn diagram, basically we will have to draw like this. This is my set P, and at the same time, this is also my set Q, right? Uh, in terms of a set, the capital P is a subset of capital Q and capital Q is a subset of P. And in this case, we have it, we have equivalence. Right? P is a subset of Q, Q is a subset of P. So basically these two are identical sets. Two identical Identity. All right. Here's some exercise. All right. Uh, question number one: Say P is a statement that says x squared is equal to 49. Q is x to the seven. Fill in the blanks here. Question number two: P x is an even number. Q x is a multiple of two. Fill in the blanks. You may want to pause the video, attempt this question, and when you're ready, resume the video. All right. Let's look at this x squared equal to 49. If I have x squared equal to 49, then my next sentence will be x here is like that. But here must have plus minus. Right, remember that we did this in radical, so this is plus 7 or minus 7. So we now know that this q, right, p implies q. Is p implies q? Is this true? No, it's not true because right, x have to be plus 7 or negative 7. No, therefore, this statement is not true. It's false. 
Okay, so P implies true, Q is not true. So P is the what condition of Q? Well, in this case, we cannot really say, well, it's the, uh, 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 but what we can say is, if it is Q, then it's P. So this is not going to be a sufficient, this is a necessary condition for Q, right? It's a necessary, that is, uh, in order to get the answer 7, well, it's necessary for x squared to be 49, but it's not a sufficient condition, right? It's not. So Q in this case, P in this case is only a necessary condition, right? Q, what about Q? Well, if, if you know x is equal to 7, then x squared is equal to 49. Well, this is a true statement. That's a true statement, right? If x equals to 7, squaring of 7 is 49. So this is true. So this implication is true. Because this implication is true, because this implication is true, Q is a sufficient condition for P. Did you get that right? If not, review this video once more. Alright, try question number two. You might want to redo your question number two now, or you just resume the video. Right? X is an even number. P. P say X is an even number. Q say X is a multiple of two. Well, if X is an even number, well, how do we represent X? Well, we can represent X by writing it as X here as 2M. For example, where M is any integer. For example. But if this is true, then you can see immediately that x here must be a multiple of 2. So p, then in this particular case, p implies q must be a true statement. So this is a sufficient condition. Sufficient condition for q. Right? p implies q in this case must be true. How about q to p? If x is a multiple of 2, if x is a multiple of 2, then I can write this as 2k, for example. Where k here is a multiple of, that is, k is some integer. But if you write that immediately, we'll see that, well, that is an even number. So q implies p is also true. So q is also a sufficient. So p implies q is true. And Q implies P is true. Therefore, what is the sign that relates this to? Well, it has to be like this. Oh, by the way, that is the sign for identity. The double arrow. Double arrow. P implies Q. Q implies P. So double arrow. This is the sign for identity. Oh, sorry. Uh, for equivalence. Okay, P is equivalent to Q.